Okay, I think you'll find this last section before the chapter 6 test to be a little less work. Now let's talk about the idea of the average value of a function. So let's suppose you have some function um, You know, I'm just going to make up some graphical function here. Suppose the function looks like this. And uh, I guess I should have said the, uh, the average value of the function on a closed interval. So we need to actually say from somewhere to somewhere else, including the endpoints, including A and B. So uh, let's say that we were you know, interested in finding the average value of this function from here. Uh, to here from A to B and of course um, over this interval sometimes the functions a little lower sometimes it's a little lower still sometimes it's a little higher and the question becomes what does it even mean to do an average of a continuous function like this um, one thing we could do is we could so we turn this continuous question into a into a discrete question and say let's just look at the function like six different places right so do one two three four five six these really should be evenly spaced so maybe let's pretend we're looking at it over seven places so you could add up those seven values you know whatever this one is let's say that's a hundred <laughs> just making that up get out of 100 and the next one looks like it's about 110 and so on and you could add up all seven of them and divide by seven now that's sort of what we know or what we're used to as an average is you just add them all up and divide by how many you've got and let's think now about using the power of calculus to do that more than seven times maybe to do that a hundred times or a million times or infinitely many times throughout this interval um, so let's pretend that we're just going to split this up this region up into seven different intervals so this is still the idea of only oops these should be evenly spaced <laughs> They're not very evenly spaced. Pretend they are. Um, now this is the idea of, it's starting to look a little bit like a Riemann sum now, but let me just say that the width of each one of these would be a little delta x. And let me remind you that how we typically get that delta x is or how we figured out is we say let's take the length of the whole interval and then figure out how many regions we're going to divide it up into uh, we had seven for our particular number of regions but that's how you get delta x is you'd say you know this is 10 minus 5 so we've got a space of 5 and we're dividing it into seven regions so each one should be five sevenths um, and I am going to say that in general what we want to do is we want to evaluate the function in the first region we want to evaluate the function in the second region and in general we want to evaluate the function in each one of those regions and we want to add all of those up keep in mind that's the summation notation symbol uh, so we want to add them all up and then we want to divide by how many there are by n so I'm going to take this little equation over here and I'm going to solve it for n so just multiply both sides by n and divide both sides by delta x um, so I want to divide by n but I'm going to replace that with b minus a over delta x uh, by the way what we're doing here is we're developing a formula when you actually do your homework problems you'll just use the formula but we're taking a little bit of a deep dive into why the formula works the way it does uh, so we do have now a three-layer fraction right so this we're dividing by this fraction uh, so I can rewrite this um, by flipping the fraction on the bottom and multiplying 
So we'll have the summation of all the function values, all seven of them, or all ten of them, or all million of them. And then flipping the uh, fraction on the bottom, I'm going to put the delta x. Okay, so there, there's the fraction flipped and multiplied. And I'd like to point out that b minus a is a constant. So I can factor that out front. So let me put 1 over b minus a out front. And what we've got left is something that looks an awful lot like a Riemann sum. And if we take the limit, because calculus is all about going to the limit, if we take the limit, this turns into an integral, right? This summation notation turns into 1 over b minus a integral of the function. And we're, we're doing that over the, the interval, of course, too. So we're integrating from a to b. And this is the formula for the average value of a function. And as long as you can do the integral over here, uh, the, the rest of the formula is easy. It's just 1 over the length of the interval. Uh, so there's the formula, and we'll take a look in the next video about how to actually do an example or two.